Hello Conway. Welcome to our first airing of Just Talk. My name is Shawana Rogers. I'm the Diversity and Economic Development Coordinator for the City of Conway. So, what is Just Talk? Just Talk is a new program that features city information and news from our city officials to help the citizens of Conway be informed and to know what's going on in our city government. So today, our topic of discussion on Just Talk will be boards and commissions. City boards, commissions, and committees were established for the purpose of advising the city council and providing ongoing input into policies and issues affecting the future of the city of Conway. The city of Conway currently has about 15 active boards and committees, but today we have a special person with us. Joining us is Mr. James Walden. He is the Planning and Development Director for the City of Conway. So we're going to welcome James to our show. Welcome, James. Yeah, thank you for having me. Awesome. So first thing that I have to know is, like, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, like you said, I'm the Planning and Development Director for the city. Uh, I've worked here for about two years. Uh, before that, I did uh, consulting uh, with a firm in the, in the area and worked in local government before that. I, I grew up as a local government nerd. So Awesome. So how do you like the city of Conway so far? I, I love Conway a lot. And one of the things that was so attractive uh, about coming to, to Conway is one of the things I noticed in cities while I was doing consulting is that there were cities that worked together and then there were cities that didn't work together. Uh, and the cities that really didn't work together, weren't collaborative, they didn't seem to be doing very well. And that's one thing that I think is a really important characteristic uh, about Conway is that it is a city that cares about itself and it's a city that, that uh, you know, the residents and institutions really work well together. I'd say I have to agree with that. I came about 20 years ago, not going to tell my age, but I came for college at UCA and then I love the way that the city worked together. So I would definitely have to agree with you there. Um, my next question for you would be, we're talking about boards and commissions today. So I know that you oversee a few boards and commissions in the city of Conway. Tell us about those boards that you oversee, which ones they are and, and a little bit about each yeah. one. Uh, so the main boards and commissions that I work with are the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission basically oversees development uh, inside the city and long-range planning for the community. So it really, in a lot of ways, drives our whole department. Uh, additionally, I work with the Public Art Board. The Public Art Board, uh, they deal with installations of public art uh, primarily when, in roundabouts. Uh, and so that's uh, sort of one of the things that the City Council funds them each year. Uh, and the Public Art Board helps the uh, staff decide where to put that investment uh, every year. Uh, and then additionally, we provide staffing uh, for the tree board. The tree board really helps govern, I guess you would say, a lot of the public trees inside the city in city limits. So if there's things that the city installs in terms of public trees, uh, guiding with that, uh, our department uh, helps them from a financial standpoint. Okay, awesome. So how do these boards and commissions into your overall position? So, you know, primarily I would say with the Planning Commission, it's the reason that we have a department. Uh, so the Planning and Development Department is set up really to serve as the staff to the Planning Commission. Uh, and so, you know, in those roles in terms of what it does in overseeing development, you know, with the zoning code, uh, basically prescribing what land uses can go where inside the city with the subdivision code, uh, basically dictating how land is developed. Uh, so if you want to take a piece of property uh, and develop it, you know, that kind of prescribes where streets go, where utilities go, all those sorts of things. Um, uh, so that, that's like one big component of it. And then a second large component of the Planning Commission is sort of long-range planning. Mm -hmm. So in state law, it prescribes that they first establish a plan for the community and then implement. And so those regulations are designed to implement that long-range plan. And, and the city's done several of those uh, over the years uh, with different, different comprehensive, comprehensive plans, the most re recent in 2005. Uh, but that sort of that long-range planning, that's the, that's the other aspect of it, that the, sort of the overall arching uh, goal of what we do is to direct the city towards this long-range vision of where we want to go and where we want to be. Uh, with public art, uh, that's been some mo somewhat more of a recent addition with uh, what our, our department is staffing. 
and let me tell you, it's, it is a lot of fun. Um, um, art is, you know, one of these things that's very creative and deciding what has value is, is somewhat subjective and, and you want it to represent sort of the identity of the, the community. Uh, and so it's a, it's a very interesting thing. It's very, very uh, neat. It's, I, I enjoy getting to be involved with it. So, and talking about those different boards and commissions, what would you say your favorite board and commission would be or a favorite well, thing about the boards well, and commissions? I think one of my favorite things in terms of thinking about commissions is just the idea is that it broadens participation in government. Mm -hmm. So uh, the whole commission system is really one of these uh, growths that came out of the progressive era reforms that happened through the 19, I mean the 1890s through the 1920s. Uh, you used to have a lot of problems in, in government where there was just rampant corruption uh, and there was a consolidation of power in a lot of ways. And so when they started doing these uh, commission type, type uh, systems, you know, there's even a commission type form of government, but sort of broadening some of the, the governance part of the city into the commission systems, uh, it really helped in terms of that. And, and so we're living sort of in that, that legacy of those reforms. And what's so great is that, let, let's say, for instance, when you've got uh, the Planning Commission, then those individuals uh, are really meant to have specialized knowledge about how the city is to be built out. With the Public Art Board, you really have people that have uh, specialized knowledge about art. And so, in a lot of ways, it's, you know, when you talk about boards and commissions, it's having people that are knowledgeable about those subjects and fields that are, have, play a role in that governance. And that, for me, I think is, is pretty neat and pretty exciting in that it, it is one of those like fundamental checks and balances in our, our whole local government system. I would agree. So my final question, James, is why is it important for the citizens of Conway to get involved? And how important is it to have a diverse representation of our citizens within our community? So, I mean, for citizens to be involved, uh, it's honestly from a, just a very base level for city government to function properly. They have to be involved. Uh, and so I, I have worked in cities before where you physically couldn't get, get, get people to fill the positions on commissions or couldn't get people to show up to meetings. Uh, and city business could not be done. So from a very base level of just being able to do the things that we need to do, we have to have that involvement. But also additionally, having people that uh, have specific knowledge and, and have an ability to contribute in those areas is very, very important because that really affects the quality of the decisions that are made on those boards and commissions. Now, from, from an aspect of diversity, there's... I would say there's there's a couple ways to look at that that particular issue. Um, one of those is that just the idea of diversity makes us stronger. So when you look back at cities over time, uh, cities have sort of been the lifeblood of um, economic development, you know, in a lot of ways. And it's been because there is an exchange of ideas. So you have different cultures that come together. You have different types of people that come together and they exchange ideas and then new things are born out of that. So this whole idea of, of diversity and the exchange of ideas and different perspectives, I think is really critically, that's really critically important in terms of making our community stronger. Uh, I think there's, there's a whole nother aspect of that. When you look at city government, um, it's really important if we're going to make decisions that are just, decisions that are, are fair, then we need to have the people that represent the population a part of that discussion. So, for instance, if we're going to make equitable decisions, then we need to be incorporating multiple voices. That means, uh, you know, Absolutely. for instance, let, let's, say, let's say, for instance, if, if I am um, the A&P Commission, mm -hmm. right? a &P Commission, one of the things that they do are sort of advertising uh, promotions for the city. They, they invest money in recreation. If it was just James as czar of the A&P Commission, 
I would tell you that we would be investing in solely whitewater parks. We'd be investing in ponds and lakes for fishing. And that's purely because that's all my interest that's is, interest, right? That, right? That's where my interest is. But if we broaden that to a, sort of a broader perspective of who the community is, they obviously have a lot different ideas about what is good for recreation in the Absolutely. community. And so that, I think, to, you know, if it was just me making those decisions, uh, then that wouldn't necessarily be very fair to the, you know, 69 other thousand people in the, in the community. And so it, it's important to have that diverse representation is exactly for that reason. Absolutely. And James, that is the perfect segue into this new announcement. So we will be adding a new board to the Boards and Commission in 2021. So Boards and commissions open up October the 1st, so make sure that you visit conwayarkansas.gov to see those boards and commissions, but we will definitely be adding a new board, and I'm excited about it. So we will actually have a diversity council that we will be adding for 2021. So exactly what is the diversity council? So the diversity council, it brings together citizens of Conway from diverse backgrounds to foster dialogue and establish steps and actions that nurture relationships and promote a positive sense of culture and community in the city of Conway. So I'm pretty excited about that yeah. and looking forward to getting that, that going. Great. So I'll be talking to you a little bit more about that. Um, but thank you, James, for joining us today. And for those who are interested in the boards and commissions, again, they start October the 1st. And make sure that you visit conwayarkansas.gov conwayarkansas.gov <laughs> and click on the boards and commissions and it'll give you the boards and commissions that we have open and available along with the positions that we have on those boards. So keep an eye out for our next Just Talk session. Um, we're planning on doing Roundabout Streets with Finley Vincent. He is our director and city engineer for transportation. So if you would like to submit questions about streets in the city of Conway, Send those to diversity at conwayarkansas.gov. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.